training for space travel is about to go underwater? Welcome to the UAT. UAT stands for Underwater Astronaut Trainer. This is actually based off a 1 16th model of the neutral buoyancy simulator located in Texas, okay? So this is used to train astronauts to develop spacewalks and living in the ISS and whatnot. Cool, guys. Let's go hop into the water. Astronauts need to prepare before they go to space, and that's pretty difficult because we've got gravity here on Earth. One method is to fly really high in a jet and then drop really fast. This creates a zero gravity effect. But you can only do it for about 30 seconds. So underwater training is really useful and it's lots of fun. This is the one we've all been looking forward to, underwater astronaut training. Welcome to the underwater astronaut trainer. Let's get that mask on and let's get started. I want you to breathe from scuba for the first time. I want you to put your regulator in your mouth and just breathe as normally as you can. And I want everybody to come down to your knees on this platform. It's basically simulating space really well. It feels like space, and just like in space, if you don't have your gear with you, you can't breathe. Most of these problems in fight. <laughs> I'll face first. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. None of the cadets have scuba dived before, so the first half hour is spent learning how to breathe through the regulator attached to the air tank on their backs, and what to do if it falls out of their mouth underwater. It's really a strange feeling because you're underwater, but you're breathing, breathing normally. Like, and then once you look down, you see this big 24-foot tank of water at the bottom. It's just an eerie feeling. Good job, good job. So, does everybody feel good about them? Yeah. 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 Feels confident, self-assured. Awesome. I'm not going to be diving today because I used an inhaler a few years back. A little disappointed, but it's fine. We're going to be doing snorkeling today while everyone is uh, scuba diving. The big structure there is uh, just like a node on the space station. That's what it's designed to look like. There's just one ISS node here in Huntsville. But in the huge training tank in Texas, they can put a full-sized international space station underwater so that astronauts can practice EVAs and become master spacewalkers. They even put on their full spacesuits. But our space cadets aren't ready for that yet. And the training pool here in Huntsville isn't as big, so scuba gear will do just fine. If you can see these two balls here, those are actually bowling balls. One's darker than the other, one's lighter than the other. These are our basketballs. We didn't know how it was going to be to build things in space when we went to the moon the first time back in the 60s. So it's very simple. This construction project is simple. However, you're going to have to figure out how to continue it. All right, you're definitely going to need some help on that one. Awesome, let's get started. So neutral buoyancy, basically you're putting yourself in microgravity like the ISS is, because you have to remember that the ISS still has a small, a tiny, tiny bit of gravity because it's in low Earth orbit. Now, not enough that you'd be stuck to the floor, but you can push yourself away from stuff and things like that. It was a bit scary going in that deep, and you could feel the like, tension in your head and your nose. Just push shut. I knew the first thing that I wanted to do when I reached the bottom, play underwater basketball with the bowling ball. I discovered pretty quickly that even though the bowling ball is much easier to throw, the density of water can really slow it down. Slam dunks were definitely the best option. Everyone got into some pretty cool slam dunking. I love sport and I'm big into training. If only I could do the chin-ups as easy on land as I could do them underwater, that'd be great. We were all just messing around at the basketball and then Jack started a construction task and we all joined in. The instructors have left a load of pipes and connectors on the bottom of the pool and the cadets have to try and put them back together correctly while floating. Exactly the sort of work that astronauts do in space. Look at them move. They're flying around like real astronauts. Real astronauts have lightsaber fights, don't they? We knew we only had 20 minutes of air in our tank, so even though we got up to a load of fun, by the end we realised that we'd have to get these tasks done, so there was some serious underwater teamwork going on. And how will they know if they've completed the underwater construction correctly? 
They'll be able to launch the torpedoes, of course. Success. They get 20 to 25 minutes, uh, depending on their air. Uh, but just to make safe, we give them 25 minutes. And I'm about to bang on the ladder to signal everybody up. They told us they're not ever in like skier or like being into underwater. They're not into the scuba diving, but like I think everyone loved it. It's cool that something so fun is actually a real part of astronaut training. And you can see how it's useful. Being able to function and complete tasks while floating around surviving on a limited supply of air, that's life in space. If you pass this test, you're pretty much there.